I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a couple of different options you have for off-road lighting. There are a lot of different types of lights that you can install on your Jeep. You can use them for all different purposes, and we've been wheeling this Jeep all day long. You can tell by how dirty it is, but it's starting to get dark out, so now is when all of those lights are really going to shine, no pun intended. Make sure you subscribe to our website to check out all the videos we've been making all day long today. But for now, let me tell you a little bit about these lights before we hit the trail. So the first light bar I want to talk about is right up here. These are super popular right now. This is a 50 inch light bar by Raxium and this is their double row light bar. So this is going to have 105 watt LEDs. This thing throws a ton of light. Most 50 inch light bars are going to do that. They're going to just throw a ridiculous amount of light. It's honestly a lot more light than what a lot of us need when we're out on the trail or in our everyday lives. But a lot of people just like the way these look as well. A lot of guys will install them and never even really use them. What we're going to use this light for is when we have a wide open trail, when we really want to see 100, 200 yards down in front of us, we have a campsite, we have a work area, we're doing a nighttime recovery, and we just need gobs and gobs of light. Now, the downside to something like this is because it is mounted up high and it is so powerful that if you have any other Jeeps in front of you in line on the trail or certainly anybody coming towards you, you're definitely going to blind them. You're going to ruin their night vision. So this is going to be for those certain circumstances, but it's not an all the time light. What we have here is Raxium's smaller 21 and a half inch light bar. Now this is going to be similar to that 50 inch except of course it's smaller. It's going to still be a double row light bar, have the same LEDs, even have the same beam pattern with the floodlights on the outside and the spot on the inside. But this is going to be able to be mounted in a few additional locations. That 50 inch you can really only put it in one spot. This you can mount up on this bull bar. There are a couple of bolt on grill mounts that you can get for this light so it is a little bit more useful in that way and it's also going to throw a little bit less light which as I alluded to before can be a good thing if you have somebody in front of you on the trail you don't want to completely blind them with a 50 inch LED so this is going to be a little bit more useful light you can also aim it down a little bit further so this is going to be something that we honestly use a lot more often than even the 50 inch. Up here we have Raxium's 3 inch square LED lights and these are going to be the workhorse lights. These are going to be probably the lights that you use more than any of the other ones. Now generally when I'm talking about lights up on the A-pillar like this, I want to see a spot pattern light. When you have a flood pattern like this is, you can get some light bouncing off the hood back into your eyes as the driver and that can actually hurt your night vision. But the way that we have these lights aimed is actually out toward the gutter. So whether we're driving down the trail or one of those dark back roads without oncoming traffic, we can flick these lights on. We can keep an eye on the gutters of the road, check for any crossing wildlife. Again, these are lights that are going to be very, very functional, very useful. They still throw a ton of light, not as much as that 21, of course, of course, not as much as the 50 inch, but they are going to be a very useful light that you're going to find yourself flicking on and using all the time. The last set of lights we're going to talk about tonight are these light spot chassis rock lights. I like these lights because they're a little bit unique for rock lights. These are actually mounted on a magnet, which makes mounting the light very, very simple. You can smack it on the pinch seam on the side of the body where we have ours mounted. You can put them underneath the Jeep on the bottom of the chassis itself. You can put them on the skid plates if you wanted to. Of course, they're not going to be as well protected. So you can really mount these lights anywhere you want, and that depends on how you're going to use them. If you're going to use them more like a puddle light, if you want your spotters to be able to see you when you're out on the trail at night, or if you just want to be a little bit flashy when you're hanging out with your buddies. Again, a lot of different uses for this type of light. These lights are going to be a little bit more difficult to install than some of the other lights we talked about because of course you have to get two wires to each of the light locations. They all have to run back to the same spot to the switch and that switch has to be powered. So again, a little bit more investment in the installation, but these do give you a look and a function that the other lights we talked about just can't. So those are the lights we have installed on this Jeep. Now let's actually take you out on the trail and show you how these are used and what they actually do in the real world. So as you can tell, it's fully dark out here. I don't know how well you guys can see me. I can hardly see anything because right now I don't have any of the auxiliary lights on. I just have the factory JK headlights on, which we all know leave a lot to be desired. So the first set of lights I'm gonna kick on is that 50 inch and here we go. It's like daylight in front of me. Like I said, these lights throw an absolutely ridiculous amount of light. In some scenarios, it's actually too much. Right now, because I'm the only guy on the trail, being able to see all the way down in front of me is a good thing, and this light actually does have a purpose. So let's turn that one off. 
and now the 21 and a half inch. And that's a much more manageable amount of light. It's still a very, very useful amount of light. It's still a very bright light. I love where this one is mounted, which is right on top of the bumper hoop. I think it's a really nice location. I can aim it up or down depending on where I prefer my light. And it's just, it's a good amount of light. It's a good useful amount of light. But if somebody was in front of me on the trail right now, I wouldn't be completely blinding them, which is what I like out of this light. It's a really nice size and it just works really, really well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the 21 and a half inch and hit the gutter lights on. And these, I've said it before, these are the workhorse lights. I really, really like having these lights on. They give you a much wider viewing range than your headlights do or even any of the other auxiliary lights that are forward facing. I really enjoy having these lights. In fact, having one of those dual A-pillar mounts so I can have a set aiming out and a set aiming forward is one of my favorite setups. Running a floodlight like I have now aiming out, a spot aiming forward is a great combination. These are gonna be super useful. Going down the trail now, this trail drops off a little bit and when I don't have this light on, I can't see that. So this is going to be a light that's gonna be great for trail use like we're doing right now, like we're using it for right now, but it's also going to be an absolutely great light for driving down those dark back roads, especially if you live in an area like we do, where there are animals crossing in front of you all the time to avoid hitting them, these are gonna be very, very useful. All right, now I'm gonna kick the gutter lights off and we'll turn the rock lights on. And I'm actually very surprised by how much light these throw from inside the cab here. It actually does a nice job of lighting up to my left and my right even further around the corner than the light pods do that are up on the A-pillar. But rock lights in general, they're gonna be more for your spotter helping you out than it is for you as the driver. I mean, I can lean out the window a little bit and they do help me see, but this is gonna be so my spotter who's in front of me can see what I'm about to run over so I don't get hung up on anything so there are no surprises while I'm cruising down the trail. That's what these are gonna be super, super useful for. So I have all of the lights on at the same time right now and all I can see it say is, wow, this is a ridiculous amount of light. Now, I'm not gonna say there's no use for having all of these lights and having them on at the same time in a recovery situation. If you're lighting up a party, you know, uh, then these are going to have some uses, but you're not gonna have all of these lights on all at the same time on an everyday basis. But if you are looking for the ability to light up everything in front of you, having all of these in place is gonna be a good idea. The other reason people install lights is just because they, they like the way it makes their Jeep look. They're not even looking at them for the functionality. And if you wanna have a bunch of lights installed on your Jeep because you like the way those, they look, that's fine too. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about off-road lights, the different types, how they work in the real world. Make sure you subscribe to your YouTube channel to check out other videos like this one, other great Jeep builds, and just generally some awesome Jeep content.